Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over five common mistakes that people make when learning programming so that hopefully you can avoid these and save a lot of time and effort. To do this, I'm going to be reflecting on my own programming journey and also sharing things that I would probably do differently if I could start over today. The very first mistake that somebody can make when learning programming is just choosing the wrong language to start with. There are so many programming languages out there that it can be hard to decide on where to start. And when I actually tried to first learn programming, I was in middle school and I went to Code Academy and I tried to start with the HTML and CSS courses. And most of you may realize that there's an issue with this approach and that is that both HTML and CSS aren't really programming languages. And I quickly lost interest because there is just so much that you can learn about HTML and CSS before moving on to the fun stuff like JavaScript that I just thought that programming was difficult and boring and I didn't really get to see its full potential at the time. And this caused me to not start programming until about six years later when I was in college. I don't expect many of you to make that same mistake because it was a pretty big thing that I didn't realize I was doing wrong, but you may end up doing this on a smaller scale by trying to learn a difficult programming language as your first language. Because one thing that many people don't consider when either choosing or recommending a programming language for people to start with is survivorship bias. Because sure, the person who becomes a developer by starting with C or C++ will have a better understanding of how everything works. But how many people tried to learn C or C++ and then gave up because it was too difficult to get started? So that's why my recommendation would be to start with an easier language like JavaScript or Python because the barrier for entry on those languages are much lower than most of the alternatives. The second mistake is related to the first one, and that mistake is trying to learn too many programming languages. Some people try to collect programming languages like their Pokemon cards, and then they use this number of languages that they know to try to impress other people. But no, just because you can write Hello World in 10 different programming languages doesn't mean you know them well. So instead of doing that, my recommendation is to try a few programming languages and research the use cases for them and the pros and cons. And then after this brief period, choose one and then stick with that for a few years and try to learn as much as you can about that language. But while you're doing that, keep in mind that your goal for learning should be to learn the actual high level concepts. If you can manage to do that, then switching to other languages is really easy because most of them have the same core concepts and the only thing that really changes is the syntax. The third mistake is one that I made while I was in college and that mistake is not making projects sooner. I was rather dependent on my college courses expecting that they would show me everything that I would need to know to become a good software developer, but that really was not the case. Even if I did try to learn things outside of the classes, I was usually using online tutorials like Udemy or Skillshare. And although I felt like I was learning while I was watching the tutorials, I wasn't actually creating my own projects to see the tutorials in action. And because of that, I forgot 90% of the tutorials that I watched and I wasted a ton of time. So if you don't actually try to make something with what you learn, you will just forget it. And throughout college, whenever I felt like I wasn't learning useful things in the courses, I would say to myself, oh, they're probably just trying to build a good foundation for us and we'll get to the more useful stuff next year. And then next year would come around and I would end up saying the exact same thing. It really wasn't until my senior year that I realized, oh, this stuff is never coming. So that's when I really started to switch gears and started creating my own projects on the side. And I learned way more from creating my first web app than I did from most of my degree. Some college courses are different and they will teach you valuable skills, but for the average college, I don't believe that's the case. The fourth mistake that I made when I was trying to learn program was not making my code user-friendly or shareable. So although I'm telling you guys to start with JavaScript, that's not what I actually did. I started with C, then C++, then Java, then Python, and finally JavaScript. And that was because of my college courses. But any of the projects that I made before learning JavaScript existed on my computer and basically my computer only. And they're basically still there to this day, the ones that I started before then. I did try to make some executables in both Java and Python after that, but that process is tedious and not as easy as you would think, especially if you want to be trusted by Windows and Microsoft. So I definitely sound like a JavaScript fanboy, but once I realized that any project that I made with JavaScript could easily become a website and all that I needed to do to share that project was give somebody the URL, it made getting feedback so much easier and getting user feedback on your code really changes the way that you think as a software developer. So even if you don't learn JavaScript as your first language, you should still try to learn how to make your code as shareable as possible. Whether you're learning Python and you want to make a backend for a website that serves up content, that's another way to do it. But basically you should always have in mind, how is this programming language going to help me get this in the hands of users? And if you can't see a clear path to that, choose a different language. The fifth mistake is hard to see when it's happening, but it can waste a ton of time in the long run. And that mistake is allowing feature creep into your projects. For anyone that doesn't know, feature creep is when the scope of your project starts to expand 
beyond the original goals. And this is usually caused by the addition of small features being added to your website as you go. For example, imagine that you're trying to build a simple portfolio for your photography side gig. Initially, the idea is to have a homepage, a gallery, and a contact page. But then as you're working on the gallery section, you think, wouldn't it be cool if users could leave comments on each picture? And then you add that to your to-do list. And by adding that to your to-do list, you instantly end up needing authentication, a backend to store your messages, web sockets, and immediately your simple static web app just turned into a full stack web app. Now, if your goal from the beginning was to make a web app with those features and you knew the cost upfront, then that's fine. The issue occurs when the nice to have things start to take up more time than the core functionality of the project. So to prevent feature creep, start all projects by asking yourself this question. What is the fewest number of simple features that can make this project usable? In other words, what does the minimum viable product look like? Then if you're ever considering adding a new feature, evaluate how long it would take to add it and make sure that you only add it after completing those core features first. Those are the five main mistakes that I made when learning this program. So if I were to start over, I would basically inverse this list and I would take some time to learn different use cases for the most popular programming languages and the pros and cons, and then I would just choose one of them. And then after choosing that one language, I would stick with it for a while and avoid chasing any shiny new programming languages. And then I would start making projects right away and make them more often and to learn new concepts. And then I would start off by making all of the projects shareable and I would avoid feature creep by writing down the core features and finishing those first before adding anything else. And hopefully this video will help some of you avoid those mistakes. And if you're looking to hear what my top five programming languages are, you can watch that here. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.